A warm greeting. Today is Monday, June 17, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. In this video, we will be talking about a low-pressure system that is developed south of the island of Bermuda and has a low probability of development as it moves west-northwest over the next few days. It is important for interests in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida to be aware of the evolution of this disturbance. Before providing details on this forecast, I want to let you know that we are also monitoring the Central American gyre that is moving toward the Gulf of Mexico. Here, a tropical depression and tropical storm could develop and move over southern Texas or northern Mexico. Interests in this area can watch a video that I recorded earlier this morning on my YouTube channel. Let's talk then about this low-pressure system associated with a frontal system. A high-pressure system is strengthening in the northeast United States, causing the southern part of the frontal system to become trapped in the waters of the southwestern Atlantic. Eventually, it will move west-northwest as we approach. In the infrared satellite image, you can see that a low-pressure area has developed in this zone. Although at the moment the wind shear is not favorable for significant development as it moves west, it may encounter marginally favorable conditions for development. That is why the National Hurricane Center, as of 8 a.m., maintains a 30% chance of development of a tropical depression as it approaches the southeast coast of the United States. Let's briefly look at the projections from the global models. Starting with the American model, this morning it develops a tropical depression by Tuesday night or Wednesday morning just south of the island of Bermuda. It then moves this possible cyclone on a west-northwest trajectory, eventually reaching South Carolina and North Carolina during Saturday morning or afternoon. Fortunately, it shows this as a weak tropical storm. It is also important to mention that this model has been inconsistent in its projections. Here we can see the last four runs where it has had a dramatic change, now showing a slower movement for this system, and a trajectory closer to South Carolina and North Carolina. This is unlike previous days when it had a much faster system moving over northern Florida and the coast of Georgia. One of the most important things is that this gives us little confidence in these projections, and at the moment, there is no consistency in the runs of the American model. We have to wait and see if the next runs are consistent with this solution, especially when the other models do not see cyclonic development. For example, here we have the European model, which, although it does develop a strong low-pressure system, keeps it very weak as it approaches the northern Bahamas by Thursday. Eventually, it moves this disturbance northwestward towards South Carolina and North Carolina, but without developing it into a tropical cyclone. Remember that both the European and American models are very good models, but sometimes they do not show consensus, as is the case here. So, this leaves us with an unreliable forecast. We will have to observe in the medium term to see if this low-pressure system finally consolidates. What we do know is that it will initially move westward, and eventually there is a high probability that it will take a northwestern trajectory, over North Carolina or South Carolina. So, we still need to see how strong it could become in this region, and the risk for Florida and Georgia has decreased considerably this morning. However, they should still be attentive to any changes. Remember, until we have a defined system, there will be changes in these forecasts. Look at different scenarios in the ensemble members of the GFS model. Notice that almost none of them develop this low-pressure system into a tropical cyclone. There is only one that has a tropical storm moving parallel to the coast of North Carolina during the next weekend. On the other hand, the ensemble members of the European model, the vast majority keep this system quite weak and do not develop it into a tropical depression. Those that have a strong low-pressure system also have a trajectory towards North Carolina. One of the most important problems this disturbance will have in strengthening and organizing is that dry air will be surrounding the circulation, which may result in the non-development of a tropical cyclone. If it does manage to develop, it must remain quite weak as it approaches the southeastern United States. Something to consider is that the models are projecting the low pressure to be quite small and compact. If this is the case, these disturbances can have significant intensity fluctuations. This means they can dissipate quickly and also strengthen faster than anticipated. We just have to observe over the next few days. At the moment, there is no significant threat to the United States. We will simply be attentive to the model projections. At most, this disturbance can bring some rain to the region it approaches. For example, the GFS model with a trajectory near South Carolina and North Carolina predicts between 2 to 4 inches of rain for the weekend. It could bring some rain to the southeast and east of the United States, but at the moment, accumulations should not be significant. Well, with this, I say goodbye, but not without inviting you to subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay informed about this event and the hurricane season. Go to the bottom of the video. Click on the red subscribe button, and then click on the bell to receive notifications when I upload new videos. I hope everyone has an excellent start to the week. See you in the next video.